We actually just had our first official road safety meeting yesterday and that was one of the issues that we discussed and continuing over from the last session um, of the Road Safety Council and seeing how far the loan we can get with the roadside sobriety. Um, it is at an advanced stage at this point in time and we can only hope that within this year that we can see some effect of it being done but roadside sobriety we strongly believe that is a tactic to use to help address the drunk and drunk driving issue that we have and also just to cut down on people getting into accidents because of that. Yeah, um, it's a lot of injuries. Um, mm. So you, you mentioned the end of the year there, did you mean the, the end of the parliamentary year? I would say the end of the actual fiscal year. So hopefully we can see it done before the end or some more progress made, but um, I won't give a date to say when, but hopefully by the end of the year. Because initially um, we had um, David Burt was mm -hmm. saying, um, you know, that the roadside sobriety testing would be in effect by the end of 2017. Mm -hmm. That date yes. came and went. So we're on a second deadline now, mm -hmm. the end of the parliamentary year. Um, it's... <laughs> we're hoping that we're not going to miss another deadline. Right. In our meeting yesterday, there was reasons given as to why and where the actual hold up is but like I said it's at an advanced stage and we can only hope that by the end of this year it will see come to fruition yeah. but um it is being pushed and definitely under this new road safety council under my watch we will definitely push it to see it come to effect what we want to do is again it all comes down to and I know this is a big point but educating people because we get on our bikes, we get in our cars, and we think that we are the master of the road, we rule the road, and we're free to do what we want. But we have to stop and second guess things that we normally would do because that's how accidents are happening and how we're having these injuries and fatalities. So I would say on the education part, educate people on leave 20 minutes earlier for work so you don't have to rush. Uh, stop and think about overtaking before you do it. Even the smaller minor things, putting your indicator on, because at the last minute you want to turn, and if the person behind you isn't paying attention, they hit you from behind. You know, it might be a small injury or a small collision, but things like that are what adds up to the numbers going to the hospital, and in bigger collisions, it's real fatality. So just educating people on, and also changing the mindset when they get behind the wheel or get on the bike. Yeah, um, <clears throat> with the terms of speed, and yes, we will be advocating for speed technology because, as you stated, it is a bare culture in Bermuda, speeding. 35k is the speed limit, but as you say, it's disregarded on a regular every day. And that also, again, comes down to education. 90% of all of the solutions is to educate. Because if you educate people, then you give them the information they can make. Hopefully, they'll make the correct decision, the wise decision. Speed cameras, yes, they will hopefully in the short term have to be a deterrent. And then in the long term, it can help change our culture. Because as of now, you can speed. Everyone knows, okay, where the police are. Or you have people that put out warnings, the police are here. They're so UK, I'll speed on this stretch. So they feel that they can get away with it. Speed cameras will help address that. So you don't know where the cameras are or even, mm. you know, they're out there to deter and to catch people. And like I said, in the long term, hopefully it helps change our culture so that people think twice about speeding. I just want to say that speeding kills. Mm -hmm. You might not think that it kills right now, but accidents because of speeding, they have more serious injuries or fatalities. Mm -hmm. So think twice about speeding. I have seen that it has been adequate enough at no, as, as of now, so we don't want to over-police it to where as you do Project Ride, you successfully pass, and then you have another, another step which is sort of pro regressive to what you've just done, because if you pass Project Ride and we see the results going down, we don't want to put more on top of that. So um, what I can say is that we want it to continue to downward trend, but we don't want to over-police or over, 
I don't know exactly how to say it, but ever pleases what I would say. Those that are com new and coming onto the roads, for those that have been on the roads and feel the need to re-educate or to again to refresh themselves on the roads. Yes, that is a person that's maybe. 40 of plus years old that hasn't been to Project Ride, but they ride every day, but they feel like, let me readdress myself to some of the new, maybe, rules of the road, so just how to properly handle bike, because you were never taught. So if you're too old for Project Ride, but if there's a next step that you could take, we encourage that, because we want to encourage all road users to try and be as educated about the road so that they can be the more cautious rider and drivers on the road with the as of now they have a youth license so as a 16 year old you pass project ride you have your youth license which still has restrictions on curfews you can't be out at certain hours and also you cannot tow a pass to another passenger with that also i would say comes with the learning again on the road is what you should be doing is as a 16 year old you get your bike with those reg restrictions still learning and improving your road handling abilities. So with the, I want to say, graduated licenses and the next step, it's sort of there, it just has to be more framed and structured. So after you do project right, you can still be learning under a structured umbrella so that when you finally go to 18, and you have a full license, you've had the two-year period to successfully learn and negotiate on the roads. So that, that sounds like a graduated license and program. But still yeah. under the project right. Yeah, it's an yes. extension of project right. I, from my experience, personal experience, I do believe if a child is confident enough, they should be handled it, as I said, as a 16-year-old, I believe I was one of the first groups that done the project right and we were just taught the on road, the hand written the written test and then we went on the road confident enough that I was able to handle and I believe a child if they have the confidence they can. Not all children, maybe there are those that can benefit from extra and more practice, but there it's the confidence level each kid, that's how I would say it. Um, if I had a kid that was 16 and he was confident enough, I will feel confident and give him the confidence to go out on the roads and with the education of making the wise decisions on the road that he would be safe. No, we do support uh, roadside sobriety and the speed cameras 100% um, and that we will do all that we can, like I stated before, to get that acted on and come into effect during this year. Um, outside of those, just the three topics that we have talked about, um, we have other initiatives outside of them to address um, whether it's reckless or do care driving or riding. Those are other issues that have to be addressed in the island also because people feel that if you have the main focus is drunk driving, speeding, and whether it's graduated licenses, that they can get away with doing other small things. And a lot of people don't realize what do care, at unattentive driving and distracted driving, how those can affect you if you're driving and you're fidgeting with your radio or if you're fidgeting with, you're trying to put your cup in a cup holder. Those are distracted, drivers that distracted driving issues that happen and cause accidents. So those are also things that we would like to push to have people, again, it also comes with educating people understanding that these are things that lead to accidents and to collisions.